Good day Grade 11s. Welcome to your next lesson in Equations and Inequalities. In our last lesson we learned how to complete the square but because this is quite a complicated thing that we need to do I've decided to do an extra lesson where we just practice different examples of completing the square in order to make sure that we actually know exactly what to do in every situation. The reason for this is that completing the square is not just important in being able to complete the square but it's actually a very useful tool that you'll use later when we're looking at our graphs. So let's look at our very basic example first. In our most basic example, we will see that we're just going to use the rules that we learned last time. So the first rule is that we need to isolate the x squared and the x. In other words, we're moving this number to the other side. So we've got x squared plus 10x equals 2, right? Because when it goes across the equal sign, it becomes plus 2. Now we want to complete the square. And there's a little trick that we use every time. So we've got x squared plus 10x. And it's always a plus because a perfect square always ends with a plus on this side. And that, because why? Because a plus times a plus is a plus and a minus times a minus is a plus, so always. And then what do we do? We halve this middle term and we square it. So we go 10 over 2 squared is equal to, and then what we do on the one side, you have to do on the other side. Otherwise, this equation doesn't stand. Equation means equals. So if we do something to one side and we don't do it to the other side, then we are cheating. So then this becomes 10 over 2 all squared. Right, now, if we want to simplify this, we take down the square root of the first term, which is x. We take down the upper end here, which is plus, and we take the square root of that. 10 divided by 2 is 5. All squared is equal to 2 plus. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. So now we have x plus 5 all squared is equal to 27. Now the way to solve for this x, what we're going to do now is we're going to go square root both sides because we want to get rid of that square. So we've got x plus 5 is equal to, and remember if we square root a number, we end up with a plus or minus square root 27. And to solve for the x, we need to get rid of this 5 on this side, so we take it across. So it becomes x is equal to minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 27. Therefore, we can say that x is equal to minus 5 plus the square root of 27, or x is equal to minus 5 minus the square root of 27. And if you do that on your calculator, you get x is equal to 0 0.196, or you get x is equal to minus 10.196. Now, in maths, we usually round off to the second decimal unless they ask you otherwise. So the problem with this is because the 6 is going to round up the 9 which is then going to round up. So this actually is going to round up to approximately 0 0.2 and this is going to round off to approximately minus 10.2. So those are your basic steps, right? You get the number onto the other side, halve it, square it, halve it, square it, bring down and then we just solve as per usual. Let's look at another example. So in this one, we've got 2 times 6x plus x squared equals minus 4. So the natural instinct is to multiply this out. But if we look at the previous example, do you see that we got your x squared and 10x on the one side, so everything with x squared and x on the other side, and your numbers on the other side. And you'll notice the prefix of your x squared is a 1. We like to complete the square with a prefix of a 1 in front of the x squared. So, we don't really want to multiply this out because if we do, we're going to have to get rid of that 2 again. So what we're going to do right from the beginning is we're going to divide both sides by 2. So what we're left with is 6x plus x squared is equal to minus 4 divided by 2, which is minus 2. So now it's starting to look like a good thing, but what we need to do is rearrange this because I really don't like this x squared over there. I'm going to write it as x squared plus 6x is equal to minus 2. And now it's pretty easy to complete the square. Why? Because we've got x squared plus 6x and what do we do? We halve this and we square it. So we add 6 divided by 2 squared. What we do to the one side, we have to do to the other side because it, so it becomes plus 6 over 2 all squared. And then, right, let's do this. What does it become? Square root of this is x. This sign here is a plus. 
you bring this down, 6 divided by 2 is 3, all squared is equal to minus 2 plus 6 over 2 is 3, so it becomes 3 squared. So we've got x plus 3 all squared is equal to 3 squared is 9 minus 2 is 7. Therefore we've got x plus 3 because now what are we doing? We're square rooting both sides and if we square root both sides what do we get? Remember always plus or minus the square root of 7. Therefore your x is going to be equal to minus 3 plus root 7 or minus 3 minus root 7 and then we're going to pop out our calculator which we no longer have so let's just quickly get it. There we go and we're going to go, we want the menu and we want that and the XE. Right, so we want minus 3 plus root 7 so it's going to be negative 3 plus root 7, shift root 7 and that becomes minus 0.35, minus 0.35, so it becomes minus 0.35, or if I do this again, and I go, okay, this time I want minus 3, minus root 7, so I have got minus 3, minus root 7 and this time I get minus 5.65 minus 5.65 so that's minus 5.65 so these are my possible roots my possible solutions for this quadratic equation let's look at another example okay now this one we definitely need to multiply out okay because we want it in the form of a quadratic equation so let's do that we've got t squared plus the c is equal to 20 minus 18t. Now what I want to do is I want to get everything with a t onto the left hand side and everything without a t onto the right hand side. So therefore we've got t squared and when I take this across to, how did that become 18? It's 16, sorry. When I take this across it becomes plus 16t is equal to 20 minus the t. So now we've got t squared plus 16t is equal to negative 10. Right, and now we can just complete the square like usual. So we've got t squared plus 16t and then what do we do? We add, halve it, 16 over 2 and then we square it and what we do to the one side we have to do to the other side so it becomes 16 over 2 squared. So then we take the square root of this which is t, we take this number there which is a plus and we take that, 16 divided by 2 is 8, all squared is equal to minus 10 plus 16 divided by 2 is 8 and 8 squared is 64 so we've got t plus 8 all squared is equal to 54 therefore t plus 8 is equal to what? Remember what are we going to do? When we square root this we get plus or minus the square root of 54. I emphasize this because it is a silly mistake that a lot of students make all the time and it's so frustrating. So that becomes minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 54. So then if we pop out our calculator we get our first option we will take is minus 8 plus the square root of 54, so we go minus 8 plus the square root of 54 and we get minus 0 0.65, so that equals minus 0 0.65 or if we do it again, but this time we're going to go for the minus, we get minus 8 minus, actually that's wrong, let's just go back how do we go back? Delete. Minus the square root of 54 and we get minus 15.35. Minus 15.35. So that is minus 15.35. Right. So do you understand? And if you look at this carefully, you will see that we seem to be getting decimals all the time. And the reason for this is one of the one of the points of using this completing the square is when we don't have something that is easily factorized. Let's look at another example. 
Okay, this time we've got 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. Okay, so the first step again is always to get everything that's not an x onto the other side. So we've got 3x squared plus 6x equals 2. But now we've got a problem. We've got this 3 over here in the front. But we don't like completing the square when there's a coefficient in front of the x squared. Any coefficient that's not 1, we don't want it. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide the whole of this by 3. So we're going to divide this by 3, and that by 3, and that by 3, so that we have a coefficient of 1. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we end up with x squared. Plus 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we end up with 2x, is equal to 2 over 3. Now we can complete the square with ease. We've got x squared plus 2x. What do we add? We add half it and we square it. So it's 2 over 2 squared. What we do to the one side, we have to do to the other side. So it becomes 2 over 2 squared. And I know this is tedious because you can immediately say, oh, but that's 1. How obvious. But the reason I'm writing like this is so it gets into your brain that it's halving squaring, halving squaring. Right, then what do we do? We take the square root of this dude, which is x, plus the square root of that. 2 over 2 is 1. All squared is equal to 2 over 3 plus 1. So now we don't like that as a fraction and a number. We're going to combine that. So we've got x plus 1 all squared is going to be, that is the same thing as saying 3 over 3. Do you agree? So therefore I can say 2 plus 3 is 5 over 3. Now if I square root this, I've got x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. Therefore our answers are either x is equal to, when we take this cross it becomes minus 1 plus the square root of 5 over 3 or minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 3 and we get out the calculator and we go right let's do this we get minus 1 plus shift square root of bracket 5 divided by 3 close bracket equals and I get 0 0.29 so therefore this is equal to 0 0.29 or if I get this out again, this time I've got a minus the 5 over 3, so it becomes minus 1 minus shift square root bracket 5 divided by 3 close bracket and it becomes minus 2.29, so it becomes minus 2.29. Right, so those are your two solutions for this quadratic here. Right, grade 11, so we've done lots of examples of completing the square. I hope by now that you understand all the different tricks and you have know what to do. Please practice, practice, practice and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day.